Hey everybody, I'm Canadian Operator and this is my Tika T3X Attac A1. It is a beautiful rifle, four and a half kilos of goodness, but unfortunately we will not be talking about this today because today we're talking about the anatomy of a rifle scope. However, if you want to see my full review, do make sure to subscribe. So whether you're someone who is brand new to rifles or somebody who's just been shooting maybe some pistol disciplines or doing some shotgun hunting, you kind of want to get back into rifle shooting or just into rifle shooting in general and you're looking for a scope, but you're kind of lost on the spot and stat sheet on the manufacturer's website. I'm hoping that this video will help you to kind of get an idea of sort of what to look for so that you don't overspend and you get something that works for you. So with that said, let's go ahead and begin. Okay, so first of all, as always, let's just go ahead and make sure that our rifle is nice and clear, even though I know it is, but what a beautiful smooth action on this Tika. We are nice and clear, so let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit and talk about what we're here to talk about. Okay, so the first choice you're going to have to make with a rifle scope is whether you want to go with MRAD or Meloradian or MOA, minute of angle, as your unit of measurement while you're getting yourself dialed in and zeroed. I personally like MOA. It's very, very simple to explain too. It's about 1.05 inch at 100 meters or 100 yards. Very similar. So essentially, if I have a rifle that is shooting within one inch uh, at 100 meters, that is a one MOA rifle. And you'll see a lot of rifle manufacturers talking about this. Hey, our rifle is 1.5 MOA out of the box. Our rifle is one MOA out of the box. And basically what that's telling you is it's able to shoot within one MOA or 1.05 inches at 100 meters, which is quite good. Of course, with a PRS or a precision rifle, you do probably want to go a little bit better than that. But essentially, that's telling you that your rifle is, is very, very accurate, which uh, the Tikas, I got to say, really, they are. And they do have a one MOA promise out of the box. Now, uh, once you've chosen that, of course, you'll have to choose your reticle. And there's, again, a number of different reticles there. I prefer the EBR reticle. Uh, but you have, you know, dead hold reticles and all this kind of stuff. Uh, and that's something else you're going to have to choose. And it's, it's not a, really a, a big choice in terms of is it going to make a big difference in the way you shoot? Uh, it really depends on what kind of shooting you're doing, right? If you're doing a lot of shooting where you're holding over or you, you basically you don't want to have to adjust your zero every time you pick a new target, then you probably want uh, a reticle that's going to accommodate that. Or if you're just you know, a very casual shooter, you probably just want a straight cross and that's about it, right? Uh, one of the other things that you have to sort of pick and choose right off the bat, uh, and this will coincide with the amount of money you, de you, you decide to spend on it, but you want to choose whether you want a first focal plane or a second focal plane scope. Second focal plane will often be a lot cheaper. First focal plane will be a little bit more expensive. And the reason for that is because of the way that the reticle works uh, with first focal plane, the reticle actually getting bigger as you zoom in because it's keeping its size relative to the size of the target. Second focal plane doesn't do that. And you might want one over the other, depending on what you're doing. For me, this Venom 5 to 25 by 56 here is a first focal plane, as are the majority of my scopes. But on my rimfire, on my little Ruger 1022, I got a little second focal plane, 2 to 7 by 42, and it works for me. So again, uh, it's, it's not like one choice is better than the other necessarily. It's really just what's better for your use case. Let's talk about these covers, by the way. So you have your uh, ocular lens on this side, and you have your objective lens in here. I'm going to keep that close for now on this side. And uh, one of the things that I ran into when I was buying scopes is I really like these covers and Vortex uh, sells a bunch of these covers for their uh, rifle scopes. And I'm not sponsored by Vortex, but hey, uh, if you guys like my videos, call me. Um, <laughs> but one thing that I noticed is that uh, with these, uh, I got a little confused. Like these are actually really easy because on almost all Vortex optics, which pretty much is 100% of, of all of my optics that I own, the ocular side of it, the, the ocular lens cover is going to be pretty much the same or the same exact size for all of the scopes that I have at least. Uh, not so the case, of course, for the other side, the objective lens, because the bell or the outside is going to be bigger as a result of the objective lens also being bigger. My problem came with when I realized that, let's say I had a 56 mil objective lens and I wanted to buy a cover for that. Well, the covers are actually measured with the bell of the scope and not the objective uh, lens or the, the, the width or the diameter of the objective lens, which in this case, this one is uh, 56 millimeters, right? So basically what I did for my, this was for my four to uh, 16 by 50 or 46, I think it was 46. Um, so I was looking for a 46 mil cover and I found one and it was too small. 
And then I realized that Vortex measures the covers by the bell diameter, not the diameter of the actual objective lens. So if you're shopping Vortex, and this might be the case with, uh, with other brands as well, do keep your uh, eyes on that and just make sure that you're measuring, uh, get a little like Ikea tape measure or something like that and go around the bell of your scope and just make sure you, you know how many millimeters are there so that you can buy the right cover if you want these covers. Of course, uh, the scopes do, especially uh, the, the more expensive ones come with nicer sort of elastic rubber covers that you can use. If you wanna use those, that's fine. Um, but yeah, I like these because they just flip open and they're very convenient. They don't have to go anywhere. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of nice to have. So let's talk about the controls here. We've got some controls on the actual scope itself. We've got one up here, a dial up here, and a dial on the other side. And I'll try to show you a little bit of B-roll here so you can kind of see what I'm looking at. But we'll start with the top one here. And the top one almost always is gonna be your elevation. So that's gonna adjust up or down. Uh, then you're gonna have this control over here. This turret will control your windage and that's gonna be your left to right. And for both of those, just from now on, just picture adjusting where the bullet is going and not adjusting where the reticle is pointing. And the reason for that is because that's basically how it works. So let's say for example, uh, and, and we have one quarter MOA adjustments, which I'll talk about in a second. But um, let's just say that we are shooting one MOA or about 1.05 inches low at 100 meters. So with uh, one quarter MOA adjustments here, I know that I need to go basically shoot higher. But instead of bringing the crosshair down, which would be your instinct, what you wanna do is bring the bullet up but with this, yeah, uh, it, it's a little bit weird at first, but you gotta get used to it. Uh, for this particular one, if we're gonna turn it counterclockwise, we're going up, and if we're gonna turn it clockwise, we're going down. So because we're focusing on the bullet and or the impact and not necessarily the actual reticle, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up four clicks because each click is a quarter MOA and we're one MOA too low, as opposed to going down, which would otherwise kind of be what you'd want to do, right? Uh, and that works the same for windage. So just keep that in mind. Now you're gonna have different adjustments here on different types of scopes. Some really good scopes have like eighth MOA or better adjustments. I actually don't know if it gets better than eighth MOA. That's that's pretty fine. That's like MRAD almost level of adjustment. Um, but most of them are gonna be quarter MOA. I haven't seen any uh, that are half or one MOA, but I'm sure there probably are some out there that exist. Uh, but generally speaking, quarter MOA is what you're gonna get both for your elevation and your windage. Now on the other side here, uh, you're gonna get another knob and uh, you may not get this knob on sort of lower end or more entry level scopes. So for example, I have my Vortex uh, Crossfire 2, uh, two to seven by 42, and that one doesn't have this. Uh, and for those that don't have it, typically they're usually built in and you would have to uh, see your manual for what it is. But what it is, is what I'm gonna talk about next, which is essentially your side focus, as well as your parallax adjustment. So let's talk about both of them. Uh, the first one is gonna be your side focus. So side focus, basically, uh, you're gonna have hash marks here that are gonna determine uh, the distance. So for a lot of scopes, you're gonna see 10 or 15. Some of them might start at 25. You'll go probably to 50, 100, 2, 3, 4, 500, depending on the scope, right? And essentially what that's telling you is you wanna adjust that for the distance that you're shooting and in so doing, you're gonna adjust the clarity or the focus of your target. Now we do have a ring back here as well that's currently obscured by the ocular lens cover, which we'll talk about in a bit, which focuses the reticle itself, but this is gonna be for your target. So if you find that your target's kind of blurry and you're wondering why, if you do have a side focus here, do make sure that it's set to the right distance. Uh, the other thing that you uh, want to make sure, uh, or th the reason why you wanna make sure that you've set this to the right distance is because this is also your parallax adjustment. And to explain this to you, I, I want you to follow my lead. Make a crosshair, right, with your hands, and um, close one of your eyes, so like, use your right eye or your, or your left eye, whichever one is your dominant eye. And what I want you to do is I want you to kind of move your head up and down and a little bit left and right. And as you do that, you're gonna see more of uh, sort of one side of your hand a little bit more than the other, right? Depending on whether you're looking up or down or left and right. Now consider that that crosshair that you made is the crosshair that you're looking at in your scope. And essentially what parallax is, it's, it's keeping that that pointer that's keeping that crosshair pointing at exactly the same place in space, no matter where your eye is in relation to that crosshair. So without parallax, what you're getting is if you have a rifle that's set up exactly the way you want it, you're not moving it, the elevation, everything is set up, you've got bags, the thing is just solid as a rock, it's not moving, right? So even if you're shooting in exactly the same place, uh, you might see in your scope that you're actually aiming somewhere else. 
Uh, and, and that's essentially what parallax is, that it keeps, no matter where your eye is in relation to the crosshair, it, it makes sure that you're always looking in the same place so that you can be more consistent and accurate with your shots. So if you have one of these adjustments, uh, it's very important uh, that you make sure that you set it up correctly and it's very easy again, you just dial it in uh, to uh, essentially whatever range you're shooting at, right? And uh, that's pretty much it for that. Now, uh, this is gonna be a, a zoom optic as well, or a telescoping or whatever you wanna call it. Uh, we're gonna have magnification here, so you're gonna have a ring here on uh, towards the back, usually. Uh, I haven't seen any kind of towards the front. The side focus might actually be towards the front on some scopes, so just keep that in mind. It might be closer to uh, basically the front, uh, like just forward of the main shaft here, the main tube. Um, sometimes it's on the bell, although I've never really seen it on the bell, but I've, I've heard that there are some scopes that do that. Um, so if you don't have it on the side, you may have it on sort of the front end of your scope. So keep that in mind. Now for the zoom, very, very simple. You're just gonna be moving it left or right. This one is a little stiff because it's brand new. Um, but yeah, if it's a little stiff, that's okay. I'd rather be a little more stiff than uh, <clears throat> moving on. Um, we <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, we have a, uh, let me see if I can actually take this off so I can show you guys. So you'll be able to see here on the back, we do have a little ring as well. This one also a little stiff to adjust your focus for your reticle. So again, if your reticle is looking a little blurry or whatever, uh, you wanna use that to adjust it. And uh, yeah, that is honestly as much as I can think of. If you have any questions, if there's anything that you wanna know, make sure you ask down below. We do have a Discord as well. It's in our description here in uh, under the video. So come by, say hello, and uh, talk to a bunch of gun people from all over the world. It's actually a really great place and uh, it's growing pretty quickly. Um, and besides that, yeah, just do the usual YouTube stuff. You know, uh, if you like the video and you like my work and you wanna keep me going, um, there's a number of things you can do. You can become a subscriber and ring the bell so that you never miss my future uploads. And of course you can share the video and binge watch the crap out of all of them. I've got playlists for everything. Uh, and that is very, very much appreciated. If you have the means and you wanna go a little further above and beyond, you can use the super thanks below to buy me a cup of coffee or a beer up to you i, I, don't, I don't discriminate uh, i drink both and uh yeah you can also check out the etsy store where i'm gonna have a new shirt up very very soon uh and uh yeah that's gonna be it for today so thank you again so much for watching i love you guys i appreciate all the support all the kind words in the comments uh seriously it, it makes a huge difference you guys are fucking awesome uh and i can't thank you enough for how you guys encourage me and inspire me every day um, it, it's, it's the best feeling in the world. So thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope to see you in the next video and until then happy shooting.